While suffering through winter in France and thinking about how to test Canon's entry-level R8 and R100 cameras, I had a thought. Hey, why not go somewhere warmer? A quick Google search later and I find myself in the beautiful and balmy Canary Islands, the perfect locale to test the travel worthiness of these cameras. Both have far different price points, currently around $450 and $1,300 respectively. They're still Canon's least expensive full-frame and crop sensor cameras though, and Canon markets them as ideal for travel and adventure. Like potential buyers, I wanted to see if they're better than a smartphone for traveling. I also looked at ease of use and automated operation, flexibility for sunny beaches or dark bars, vlogging, and more. After trying them out of some of Gran Canaria's most scenic spots, I have some thoughts on which model you should buy and which one you shouldn't. Before detailing my experiences with these cameras, I want to talk about AI and computational photography. Most smartphones incorporate these tricks, like taking multiple photos in quick succession to get the best one or improve low light shots. They usually deliver better exposed shots with superior white balance too. There is a price to be paid though in terms of over sharpening and other artifacts that give shots a fake look. I tested this by taking a few shots with both a Pixel 7a and a camera in the auto settings, as many travel photographers do. As I suspected, at first glance the shots on the smartphone look better, but a closer look reveals superior photos from the cameras. It's important for buyers to expect this, or their new purchase could end up in a drawer. At first glance, the 24 megapixel EOS R100 offers a lot for travelers. It's small and light at 356 grams, so with a compact lens, it's not a huge burden compared to a smartphone. At the same time, the larger sensor potentially offers superior quality and the flexibility of interchangeable lenses. The small size comes with big compromises though. Handling is mediocre and the settings aren't super intuitive. I'd love to tell you you could just control it on the screen instead, but the display isn't touch sensitive and is fixed in place too, so nearly useless for vlogging. The electronic viewfinder has low magnification and is relatively dim, so it's hard to use in the sun, especially with glasses on. It has just a single UHS-1 card slot, so storage is relatively cheap, but you won't have a backup if the card glitches. You get a micro HDMI jack to output to a TV, along with a mic input, but no headphone jack. The USB-C 2 port can only transfer files, not charge the camera or let you use it as a webcam. It supports Canon's smaller LPE-17 battery, but is rated for a decent 430 shots on a charge and many more than that in real life. One big benefit is a built-in flash with exposure compensation to dim it down, though settings are limited in the fully automatic mode most beginners will use. The R100 has anemic performance, to put it bluntly. It shoots and focuses at just 3.5 frames per second max, the slowest in its category. It also feels sluggish when shooting raw photos, even in single shot mode. Luckily, it's much more reactive when shooting JPEG photos. The sensor has some of the worst rolling shutter I've seen in silent mode. Luckily, it does have a first curtain mechanical shutter and the silent mode setting is hidden away where many folks will never even find it. There's eye detection AF for people only and it works well if your subject is close to the camera. That's okay for family photos and the like, but not ideal for candid or street shots on your trip. The autofocus isn't great in low light either, but is otherwise fairly reliable. As you'd expect from Canon, image quality is excellent, with warm skin tones and accurate colors straight out of the camera. It can also handle low light shooting well, thanks to the large sensor, with very little noise up to ISO 6400. All that will help you take great shots of mountains, the beach, nightlife, and other typical vacation scenarios. The ability to shoot raw along with a mechanical shutter is another good reason to get this model over most smartphones. And finally, the built-in flash is there to help you get nice looking shots, even in dark environments. So would I recommend getting the EOS R100 for travel, particularly over a smartphone? Sorry Canon, but no. It's too stripped down to replace a good smartphone, and while it does deliver better image quality, it's too complicated. Instead, I'd suggest Canon's older EOS M50 Mark II, as it offers the same image quality but has a touchscreen, is smaller, and still offers good lens options. Sony's A6100 has better autofocus and video options, and if you can afford a little more, Canon's own EOS R50 is the same size but far more capable. Like the EOS R100, Canon's R8 is the company's most stripped down and cheapest full-frame camera. 
it gives you the same sensor and image quality as the $2,000 EOS R62 for $700 less, but takes away some of the speed, video features, and more. The main thing lacking in the R8 is in-body stabilization, so it relies on lens and electronic shake reduction, but that actually worked pretty well for me. It's also missing a full mechanical shutter, but does have a front curtain shutter that eliminates rolling shutter. The EVF is far more basic with lower resolution and magnification. On the plus side, it has the same flip-out display as the R6 II, meaning it can serve as a capable vlogging and selfie camera. It also has a decent range of manual controls with dual dials for the main settings, a full range of manual and auto settings, and a dedicated photo and video switch. It's also smaller and considerably lighter than the R6 II, so a better travel option. It has both mic and headphone jacks, along with a micro HDMI port. It captures photos at high speeds to a UHS-2 card, but there's only one slot. The biggest compromise is a battery that's the same as the one in the R100. Given the extra power demands of the larger sensor, it delivers only 290 shots on a charge, though a bit more than that in the real world, and under an hour of video shooting. For a budget camera, the R8 is fast. It supports only 6 frames per second in the front curtain mode, but it can handle a full 40 frames per second burst with the electronic shutter. There's significant rolling shutter though, so keep that in mind for action shots. The R8 uses Canon's latest AI subject recognition tech, meaning it can track both animals and humans accurately. It also comes with an auto setting that lets the camera determine the subject and follow it accordingly. I think autofocus is one of the most important features for a travel camera, and the R8 delivers. It can locate and lock onto various subjects and track them rapidly around the frame. That makes it more capable than other recent models like Sony's a7 IV and the Nikon on Z6 II. Focus can be selected via the touchscreen with your eye to the EVF, which works well, but be sure to enable the touch and drag setting in the menu. It's also a good video and content creation camera with a few caveats. You can shoot uncropped video at up to 4K 60p, and it supports Canon C-Log3 with 10-bit capture along with HDR PQ. 120 frame per second ultra slow-mo is available at 1080p. That said, 4K 60p has some pixel binning, so it's less sharp than the 30p mode. Image quality is a strong point for the R8 too, especially for tourists who want far more than a smartphone can offer. It's a great people and scenery shooting camera with rich skin hues and accurate colors. At the same time, the full frame 24 megapixel sensor is great in low light, delivers plenty of detail and offers beautiful background bokeh. Serious photographers can grab raw photos and get the same level of detail found on far more expensive cameras. Now I'm here to show you some vlogging on the Dunas Malaspolinas in Gran Canario. I'm trying not to film naked people because that's apparently a thing on this beach. But in any case, I want to show you some of the pluses and minuses. A plus is that the stabilization is actually pretty good, provided you have an optically stabilized lens that pairs with the built-in electronic stabilization to actually smooth video out pretty well. As you can see though, one significant drawback is that 4K video has a bit of a crop. So I've got a 24 millimeter lens here and I've got to hold it out all the way at arm's length which is not only very tiring, but uh, I can't even see uh, too much in the, back, in the background as well. Otherwise, this is actually a pretty solid vlogging camera. I'd just recommend that you get as wide a lens as you possibly can. Canon's entry-level R8 is definitely worth taking on your voyages. It offers impressive image quality and is great for content creators too. The main drawback is the lack of stabilization and a small battery but you'll be fine if you carry an extra battery or two. Rival options include Nikon Z5, which has image quality on par, but inferior autofocus and video. And if you're more into vlogging, the Panasonic S5 is a better option for less money. If you're looking for the best affordable hybrid full frame camera though, Canon's EOS R8 is a great choice. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And for more on technology, check out Engadget.com.